I think a common challenge for every colorist working in Resolve is figuring out the perfect node tree. What tools should you use when there are so many options? Of course, there's no single right answer. It really comes down to personal preference and choosing the environment and tool set that let you work most effectively. For many people though, I think this new DCTL available on my store for £10 will be a great one-stop shop. This DCTL is called Multigrade and I built it to cover many of the common operators you need when adjusting individual shots. Here are the controls, exposure, temp and tint, which are identical to those in my free exposure DCTL. So if those free controls are all that you need, you can grab that one for free. But the additional features inside Multigrade may be worth the upgrade. The extra controls are flare, contrast, pivot, highlight, highlight threshold, shadow, shadow threshold, sat gain, and sat gamma. You will also find three checkboxes, show curve, show sat curve, gang highlight and shadow, plus a drop down for timeline color space, with support for DaVinci Intermediate, Arilog C3, and Aces CCT. Exposure, temp, and tint are all built on the same underlying curve designed to mimic adjustments that you'd make directly in camera. Exposure works in stops, so changing it from zero to one is the same as increasing your exposure by one stop. Temp and tint use the same curve, but shift the color channels apart to create an overall change in color balance. Flare is a great companion to exposure. Exposure shifts the image smoothly while keeping the black point fixed curving upward in a linear ascent. Flare almost does the opposite. It keeps the upper part of the curve fixed whilst the toe shifts, lifting the black point. Next up are contrast and pivot. I won't go too deep here since they work exactly like the standard controls in Resolve, applying linear contrast. The difference is in how pivot is handled. In Resolve, pivot is just a zero to one slider where middle gray falls somewhere in between, usually between 0.3 to 0.45, depending on the color space. For example, DaVinci Intermediate places middle gray at 0.336. In multigrade, setting pivot to zero automatically locks it to the exact middle gray for your timeline space. From there, you can adjust it in exposure stops if you need to. For example, here my pivot point is set to one stop above middle gray. If I now switch the timeline color space, you'll see the curve shifts to reflect the new middle gray value for that space. The next set of controls handle more selective tonal adjustments in the highlights and shadows. Both the highlight and shadow sliders work as exposure curves in the same way the main exposure control does at the top of the DCTL. But here, each slider comes with its own threshold letting you target a specific region more precisely. This makes them really useful for finessing your curve. For example, the shadow slider can act almost like a fill light control, lifting exposure in just the darker regions of the image. The highlight slider, on the other hand, lets you tame specular highlights more gently, softening a punchy light source without affecting the whole image globally. A fair question here might be, isn't this exactly what the log wheels are designed for? And on the surface, yes, but I've always found the log tools far too jagged and sharp to rely on in a professional workflow. Here's the log wheel demonstrated on a curve. Notice how abrupt that transition point is. In practice, this can sometimes sneak unwanted artifacts into your image. If a tool looks harsh or unnatural on a curve, it will almost certainly show up in images too. That kink or jaggedness is undeniably present to some extent within that adjustment. It's just a case of whether or not you have pixels that land near that sharp turn that determines how apparent that jaggedness will be. There's another control down here called Gang Highlight and Shadows, and it's one that I thought was interesting enough to implement. When enabled, it links the highlight and shadow sliders so that the highlight slider will affect the shadows in the equal and opposite direction, forming a contrast curve derived entirely from exposure-based transformations. The highlight threshold control then acts as a pivot, determining how the two sides of the curve meet. When this gang mode is active, you will also notice an additional dotted vertical line appears. This represents the middle grey value of your current timeline color space. 
If you adjust your main contrast slider, you will see that curve pivots naturally around this point, maintaining consistent exposure at middle grey. However, in our exposure based contrast system, this pivot isn't locked by default, it's more fluid, allowing you to use the vertical line as a visual reference if you wish to neutralise middle grey. The numerical value of this pivot also won't correspond directly to the one in a standard contrast and pivot control since the underlying maths is fundamentally different. It's also worth noting that you don't need to neutralise middle grey when grading. It's simply a good foundation if you prefer a balanced starting point. And of course, if you'd rather treat your highlights and shadows independently, you can always leave this checkbox unchecked and work them individually. Next are the Sat Gain and Sat Gamma sliders. These also come with their own overlay curve, so you can monitor the shape of the saturation response. What makes them interesting is that they dynamically change the saturation method depending on whether you're increasing or decreasing saturation. When you add saturation, they use HSV, which usually looks better than Resolve's native saturation slider because it darkens colours as they saturate, giving a more filmic, subtractive look. But when you reduce saturation, HSV actually falls short because all colours ascend towards pure white. That kills tonal separation between hues, which isn't very desirable. This is where Resolve's native saturation method actually works better because it preserves luminance as you desaturate, keeping colour separation intact. Multigrade combines the best of both. When you increase saturation, it uses HSV, and when you decrease it, it automatically switches to a luminance preserving mode. This logic applies to both gain and gamma. The difference between these two controls is in how they scale saturation. Gain multiplies all values evenly, while gamma works as a power function, which means it has more influence over the lower saturation values. You can also play these controls against each other. For example, pushing gain up while pulling gamma down creates a kind of saturation contrast. High saturation colours are intensified, while low saturation colours are desaturated even further. On the other hand, pulling gain down while pushing gamma up has the opposite effect, boosting the lower saturation values while holding back the highest ones. The result is a more tastefully colourful grade, where subtle tones get enriched without letting the boldest colours dominate. And that brings us to the end of multigrade. You can grab the free watermark demo from my online store, and if you find it useful, the full version is available for £10 for professional use. All future updates will be included at no extra cost. If you do try it, I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.